last few years, we are also very focused on certain verticals huh, to support air cargo, like pharmaceutical, perishable, advanced engineering uh, goods. So we hope to roll out with our partners new products, uh, innovative products uh, in this area. So uh, keep, we'll keep you posted huh, when the experiment comes to fruit. But at the back end, uh, I mentioned earlier, the community efforts are very important. I think it takes time for people to change their behavior. But I think you compare with a few years ago, I think our partners, the trust has been built up. People are prepared to do more. Now, the question of why is no longer there, but more like how, how do we come together to do it? So we'll see more community-driven projects and innovation to improve our efficiency. Hi everybody, this is Libin Chako Korean from Stat Media Group. We are here in Munich, Germany for Ecargo Europe 2023 and Transport Logistics. Joining me right now uh, is Mr. Lim Ching Kiat. He is the Executive Vice President for the Air Hub and Cargo Development at uh, Singapore Changi Airport Group. Thank you so much, Lin, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Messe Munchen recently announced their Transport Logistics Southeast Asia happening in Singapore by the end of this year. What does it mean to you? Singapore is already a logistics hub. How is Singapore trying to consolidate that position going forward? And also how Changi Airport is uh, trying to contribute to that? Thank you. I think Singapore for the air cargo uh, business at Changi Airport, there are always a few layers. Huh? The first layer is the air cargo business helping directly the airport's business. The second angle is also that the air cargo business is very important to help our partner airlines because some of them, they are passenger airlines and cargo airlines. So the cargo business is another pillar that supports that business. And for us, the third angle is how air cargo helps the Singapore economy because we are the only airport in Singapore. So the air cargo business is very important to help our manufacturers, the small and medium enterprises to get their goods in and out of Singapore. So that is very uh, important for us. So the Messi uh, Munchen's new uh, conference in Singapore, we feel that it's very good to bring the cargo conversation to Singapore. We have many important players in Singapore in the cargo ecosystem. And uh, this new conference will help get more awareness of uh, the opportunities at the Singapore Air Cargo Hub. Singapore itself is a big hub for logistics of all modes of transport. The sea freight, for example. Recently, the World Bank Logistics Performance Index, Singapore made great improvements, for example, uh, in terms of uh, being a hub for the world. What does it mean for you as an airport? Uh, Singapore is also very uh, blessed. We have the world's uh, one of the strongest airports and one of the strongest seaports as well. So I think during the COVID period where supply chain was disrupted, we see many shippers using also new ways of shipping their goods, huh? using a combination of sea freight and air freight to transport. Now that uh, COVID is behind us and we're moving more to normalcy, I think there will still be a lot of opportunities for air, sea, cargo, but maybe for certain specific lanes and certain uh, niche areas. Uh, so we are still having many discussions with PSA, with our port operator, to see how we can get better data on this and how we can work together for some of these specific uh, use cases. Uh, talking about your collaboration with PSA International, for example, at the port of Singapore, how efficiently you try to move the cargo both combining the air cargo side uh, from your uh, airport and the sea freight from the port of Singapore. How you try to mix these two? I think uh, the first step is also to exchange information because some of this cargo is not obviously labeled as air sea cargo. So we need to, both organizations need to compare notes uh, on how to grow these uh, areas more. And I think second area is how to market uh, this service. I think we can't do it by ourselves. Probably we need a freight forwarder, an airline, and a shipping company to come and together jointly market this as a new product. So I think these are still some of the experiments we are doing to see how to grow this uh, area more. In the recent data that is available from your airport, there was a small dip in the amount of cargo that you handle at Changi Airport. Um, you attributed that to uh, the market challenges. But in the long run, how Changi Airport is preparing itself to already you have a position of a hub, but how you are planning to consolidate that uh, position. I think the latest numbers, uh, there is a dip. It's in line with uh, what the global industry is seeing and what the other Asian airports are seeing. So we are just, we are looking at as part of the cyclical fluctuation. I think uh, in the long term, we are still very bullish about the prospects. So for Changi Airport right now, our cargo handling capacity is 3 million tons a year. Moving forward for the new T5 project, 
it will be more than 5 million tons a year. So the long-term outlook is still very bullish. In fact, we are always concerned about running out of space in the near term at the current site. So I think uh, the other trend that we are very bullish about is that I think we see in the recent few years, companies are diversifying their supply chain from relying on a single country to multiple countries. And Southeast Asia is the beneficiary of this. We see more FDIs uh, in manufacturing and high-tech manufacturing in Southeast Asia. And India also is another market. So I think these are markets uh, for India, for Southeast Asia that we feel that will underpin uh, Changi's potential. So in the near term, uh, we are not letting up, even with uh, if the traffic is growing a bit slower. Actually, we see this as an opportunity to work closer with our partners on the long-term strategic projects, uh, be it uh, more digitization efforts, more efforts in sustainability, and also more community projects. Uh. I think people recognize that although individually airlines may compete with one another, freight forwarders compete with one another, there's a lot of room for the Changi ecosystem to work together as a community to enhance the effectiveness of our air hub. You already mentioned uh, sustainability. That's one topic that I hear a lot from your colleagues. What does it really mean to Changi Airport? How do you make the air cargo business more sustainable? I think there are a few layers to that. First is ourselves as an airport. How can we be more sustainable? A lot of our operations are already running on electricity. We are moving forward with solar panels. So those are projects ongoing. But another prong is how do we help our partners achieve their sustainability target? This ranges from uh, sustainable aviation fuel I think Neste has one of the biggest refinery plants in the region for SAF, so that puts us as a good position. We are also uh, busy installing more electrification points, uh, electric charging points, so that our partners can charge their electric uh, vehicles. Uh. So I think these are projects that are ongoing. Uh, moving forward, I think there are possibly areas where we can turn this into advantage uh, if we move uh, as an early mover of sustainability, for example, by creating uh, sustainable like green lanes uh, for certain air cargo products. So I think those are ideas that are still in the early stage of experimentation, but those are areas we are interested to do more. What I can expect from you uh, maybe uh, in the next uh, few years? The last few years, we are also very focused on certain verticals huh, to support air cargo, like pharmaceutical, perishable, advanced engineering uh, goods. So we hope to roll out with our partners new products, uh, innovative products uh, in this area. So uh, keep, we'll keep you posted huh, when the experiment comes to fruit. But at the back end, uh, I mentioned earlier, the community efforts are very important. I think it takes time for people to change their behavior. But I think you've compared with a few years ago, I think our partners, the trust has been built up. People are prepared to do more. Now, the question of why is no longer there, but more like how, how do we come together to do it? So we'll see more community-driven projects and innovation to improve our efficiency. Thank you so much, Lin, for joining us today. Thank you very much.